Hey there, welcome back to the homestead. Today, we are working on the off-grid um, garden watering setup. Uh, what I got here is a 1100 gallon water tank, a pair of tennis shoes, and a can of glue, and some plumbing fittings, along with pipe. And um, what we're working on is, on the top of this hill here is a irrigation ditch. It's a part of a large network of irrigation ditches throughout the foothills of Northern California here and uh, it runs right through the property, which is really nice. Uh, one thing that we don't have is power. There is power lines right there, but I don't have a meter and a pole on this lower portion of property. So we're just doing with what we got the uh, most cheapest way and, and see if we can make it work. Uh, so what I'm gonna work on is getting water from the, there's a valve there that they supply I'm going to have it tied into the top side here and then on the bottom I'm just going to do a couple of valves that will uh, allow us to get water to that direction and it's I just want to have a stockpile of water. Um, we'll go over how the the ditch works and all that and uh, sizing of water and stuff like that. It'll kind of explain why I got a tank. Um, so yeah what I'm going to do put it all together and then we'll uh, kind of walk through it and I'll just show you what I did and uh, hopefully it works. Let's get started. So some people might ask to prime or not to prime. That's what this purple stuff is. It's a PVC primer. When I was younger, uh, working on a VA hospital and uh, we did a chiller bypass system and we were doing eight inch PVC, eight and six inch PVC. And uh, you betcha we primed because we did not want any failures in any way. Um, yeah, it was uh, something else. So yeah, we'd prime it and then put glue and then slam them together. We actually had to use ratchet straps to like pull it together. It was it was uh, crazy. And some of them were like 50 feet in the air. It was just, uh, it was fun. So we got uh, all our fittings or all our pipes here. I'm leaving this one a little bit long in case I do run into any issues. I'm able to cut this and either put a coupling or a union in there. But uh, yeah, I just like to be safe and prepared for the future. Now I'm gonna start gluing it up. Another good tip to have is uh, when you're gluing up your fittings, glue your female fitting first and that way you can set it down and then uh, do the male fitting because this one's a little bit harder to set down with glue on the outside so just uh, keep that one on your mind and then also uh, push and hold don't let off right away because it will kind of work its way out
right, well, I should probably do the right thing and let it sit for a little while before I turn it on. But that's not going to happen. I'm going to give it a try. It's not under pressure necessarily. It's just gravity. Um, if it was under pressure, I, I wouldn't turn it on. But let's see what happens here. Let's give it a try. While that tank is filling up, let me show you what we got going on here and uh, this whole setup and why I did what I did and what the future plans are. We'll start up here at the ditch. Um, this is what's known as an irrigation ditch. It's a part of a large network of ditches throughout the uh, county here and they go into other counties and stuff like that and it just gets water from one place to the other. Luckily, it goes right through our property. Um, you do have to pay for it, which is what this box is. You notice there's a lock on one side and then an opening on the other. Basically, get in there, clean out the screen side, and then on this side, they took it out. <clears throat> but there's a piece of plywood, typically, that goes in there like this. I think they were having a hard time getting the old one out, so they just kind of walked away. <laughs> But that plywood slides in down there like so. And this is how much water I'm supposed to be getting a half, three quarters of an inch. But right now I'm getting full ditch. So I'm not going to complain. It'll fill it up. If they forget to swap it out, that's okay with me. <laughs> then on the end of that box inside is a pipe, four inch pipe comes through the ground here and pops out right here. At the end of that pipe is this valve and that uh, allows me to control and shut off the water there. One thing that uh, when I was plumbing this all up I noticed that that uh, male, male slip to fitting here was not really what I wanted. I should have replaced it but I didn't and now you can see it's leaking. So if you should replace you should replace <laughs> anyway i did a four inch little pipe here to get me out and then a four to three reducer three to inch and a half reducer little inch and a half pipe running up here uh, the reason i went inch and a half is the um what do they call them not petcock uh the fitting here, I'll remember, uh, in the tank here was inch and a half, so I just figured might as well do full port all the way through. Um, Male slip thread here, 90 down. Um, I did put a shut off here um, below. One, because I could use the water without the tank if I need, and also I could use it as a clean out. You'll notice when I first fired it up, I left this open so that anything that was in that pipe Although I did run it before I put all this on there. Anything that was in that pipe would kind of clean out and drop out the bottom. <clears throat> What's that? So now we're filling up the tank. It's only been running for about half an hour and it's almost full. So I think it might be a pretty quick fill. Uh, this is the tank. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. I did just level out an area for it set it down I did put wood chips underneath it just to give any voids fill the voids and stuff like that um, so yeah that's just that 1100 gallons uh, the reason I went with a smaller tank is because I needed to be lower than the ditch <clears throat> and if I would have went with like a 2500 gallon tank I would have been my out my inlet would have been like seven or eight feet up in the air so I just decided We'll go little, and if I need to, I can add another tank, you know, next to it or something like that. But I think this should be fine. Um, then we'll come down to the 
lower valves here. <clears throat> uh, I went with two inch only because the existing, it's not ball cock, manifold, I forget. The existing fitting here was two inch. So I just decided to keep it full port all the way through. I did run two valves because I have a hard time making decisions. <laughs> so this gives me options later in the future because I'd have to drain the whole tank in order to put another valve in. So I can do something here later. Also irrigate the field if I need to. Same with kind of this thing. And then on this valve, being as it's the straight shooter coming right out of the tank, I, I won't have any turbulence issues here, so this will just come right out. What I did is just a two inch slip to male thread, or slip to female thread, and that, again, because I can't make my mind up or decisions, allows me to do different things. So two inch to inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter to one inch, and that just allows me to adjust whatever I want to put on this at all times. My next goal is to figure out how to get it from the tank to the garden. So coming up, the next videos will be different things, uh, gas powered pump, possibly a solar well pump if it ever comes. Uh, I did get drip irrigation, low PSI drip irrigation. I also want to see what the PSI is on this tank with a garden hose over here just see how much PSI I have if I have enough I won't need to do any sort of pumps so that'll work out great so keep an eye out for those videos thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one